What if we dropped Godzilla from space? Funny question, right? And no, we aren't talking about space Godzilla. So like how in the world does that even make sense and why would we even want to drop this humongous titan all the way from space? A quick recap or we can say a quickie on Monster vs Godzilla facts is that he stands at around 393 feet or 120 meters in height, weighing nearly 100,000 tons and he is 100,000 cubic meters in volume which makes the big G around 1 ton per cubic meter in density. So yeah, now that we are done with that, let's go back to a scene from the fight between Godzilla and King Ghidorah in the final sequence of the King of the Monsters movie. They were both in a stalemate after so much fighting when finally Ghidorah got a power up by consuming the entire electric supply to the city of Boston. He then got the upper hand and with his three heads, two tails, two limbs and wings, he constricted a G-Man and flew him up, up to the lower reaches of the atmosphere and then just releases him for an ultimate power bomb. Yeah wrestling reference. So the G-Man burns up as he crashes down into the city and levels many city blocks. But that was just Godzilla falling from the upper troposphere, just above the clouds and nowhere near terminal velocity. And even though he was burning like an asteroid, the force of impact was likely less than a kiloton. Although it should have been more, but it was downplayed as there were still human protagonists in the near vicinity. So now that we know what happens if we drop Godzilla from the lower atmosphere, Let's try to imagine what would be the consequences of letting him free fall from outer space and right into the same city. Okay, let's say we don't carry him up there, but then Ghidorah does the job for us. To answer this question, we have to take another quick look into impact events of asteroids and meteorites. When large objects impact terrestrial planets such as the Earth, there can be significant physical and biospheric consequences. Though atmospheres mitigate many surface impacts through atmospheric entry, but still then a few large objects do make it through and create gigantic craters and an explosion of tremendous levels. Meteoroids have a pretty big size range. They include any space debris bigger than a molecule and smaller than about 330 feet or 100 meters wide. Space debris bigger than that is considered an asteroid. So we can consider Godzilla in space again, not space Godzilla. So Godzilla in space as an asteroid as he has surpassed the benchmark in size. Meteoroids enter the atmosphere at extremely high speeds of 7 to 45 miles per second or 11 to 72 kilometers per second. Earth's atmosphere on the upper hand is full of matter which creates a great deal of friction on a traveling object. This friction generates enough heat up to 3000 degrees Fahrenheit or 1650 degrees Celsius to raise the meteoroid's surface to its boiling point so the meteoroid is vaporized layer by layer. But still the larger objects do survive the upper atmosphere and due to the intense changes in heat and pressure, they end up in air bursts, which are very powerful explosions comparable to the most powerful nuclear weapons. Larger objects survive the air burst mode and come crashing down into the earth and create a catastrophe sometimes wiping out a majority of the terrestrial ecosystem and causing an extinction level event. So can Godzilla create such an impact or would he end up in an air burst mode? We can say for certain that due to his size and weight, he will not burn up and vaporize on re-entry. Okay, let's put two presumptions first. Number one, Godzilla will not vaporize layer by layer and become smaller during re-entry as we have seen him in his burning form, melting stone and metal that were close to by. Number two, his velocity would be close or equal to meteors and meteorites entering the earth in the range of 7 to 45 miles per second or 11 to 72 kilometers per second. Let's put 17. So based on research on impact events, we have found out that the biggest meteoroid that will burn up during re-entry is below 4 meters in diameter, while between 4 and 90 meters or 13 and 300 feet, they usually, usually end up in an air burst mode between 1 kiloton and 28 megatons. So an impactor with a diameter of 100 meters or 330 feet falling at a velocity of 17 kilometers per second and at a 45 degree angle will cause a gradual release of 45 megatons during re-entry burn-up. When it crashes, the explosion will be around 3.4 megatons, somewhat in the range of today's thermonuclear warhead. That is due to them losing mass as they burn up layer by layer. The closest match to Godzilla's size is a 130 meter impactor and let's say it is falling at the same speed and angle. During re-entry, it will gradually release close to 103 megatons and due to its larger size, a bigger fragment would actually hit the surface with a force of 31.4 megatons and creating a crater of 2 kilometers in diameter. 
but taking presumption number one that is Godzilla will not burn up layer by layer during re-entry, this would make the G-Man's force way more than 31.4 megatons and a crater of 2 kilometers. Since more than half of the impactors burn up, it leaves only half the size of the original measurement. So Godzilla's more equivalent impactor size would be a 250 meter diameter rock that will crash down to earth with only half its size that is 125 meters in diameter touching down. And thankfully we have found out from good sources that such an impactor would release close to 600 megatons during the crash onto earth and creating a crater of nearly 4 kilometers or 2.5 miles wide. So there you go, if we dropped Godzilla from space he would crash down with a force of 600 megatons or equivalent to 12 SAR bombers. Uh, in case some of you don't know what a SAR bomber is, it is humanity's largest ever bomb, a hydrogen bomb exploding with a force of 50 megatons. But what would happen to the city of Boston? So just one SAR bomber is enough to totally level a circled area of 48 kilometers or 30 miles wide. Just the one would wipe off the entire city of Boston and its bay and also create serious damages up to Rhode Island in the south. So Godzilla's crash of 600 megatons would most likely destroy everything within a 150 kilometers or 100 miles radius up to Connecticut if he fell in Boston. And then serious damages up to New York City, to the southwest and Canada to the north. Sorry eh? So that brings us to the end of the video. Do like, share and subscribe.